All right, guys. Well, today I'm working on the Jeep, doing something I've been wanting to do practically since I got the thing in 2008, so decade over a decade ago. If you know by the title, you know what it is. It's a doubled in radio. It's something that <clears throat> I've wanted to do, but I just really haven't sat down, got a separate dash panel, made my own, you know, kit onto the panel and then put everything together. Well, Metra came through on the 95 to 2000 trucks and SUVs with a double-din dash kit. Well, they just came through on the 97 to 01 Cherokees. This kit requires you to cut into the dash like any of these conversion kits um, that didn't have double din. The Cherokee dash for the 97-01, pretty much any of the dash support is actually part of your heater box or your HVAC box. So they, they have some aluminum tape in there for when you notch it out to cover up the uh, HVAC holes that you made uh, in the box. Uh, that might be enough. I don't know. I thought I had some extra around the house, but I couldn't find any. You might want to pick up some aluminum uh, HVAC tape. Uh, it would be in the you know, hardware section with the AC stuff for like the central heating air units. Um, I would pick up some of that extra just in case. <clears throat> so, as far as the radio, I went ahead and went back with Pioneer like I did on my Yukon. I was going to go all Android and just get an Android unit. Those things still have a lot of bugs. So I didn't want to spend roughly the same amount I would on this. You know, probably a couple hundred dollars cheaper. And then get a head unit that is not going to work right. It's going to be buggy. It, you know, I didn't want to deal with that. So I just went ahead and went back with Pioneer. Went with the ABH W4500 Next. And went with another Next unit. <clears throat> I got the PAC TR1 Bypass, I got the Metra 701817, which is the uh, wiring for the vehicle. I went ahead and got uh, just a, a couple of different 90 degree USBs from Amazon because there might not be enough room behind the dash to connect the USB ports on this. Um, so I wanted to be safe and go ahead and get some 90 degree adapters. And this is backup camera stuff. That'll be in a separate video. But uh, I went ahead and got, these are two different tire carrier mounts because I got a tire carrier on the back of my Jeep. <clears throat> probably end up, this one could, includes a camera, but I'm probably going to just use this one, which is just a bracket, and then use the NVX camera. That seems to be a better solution. <clears throat> so, now, I'm going to go ahead and go over the wiring harness, which most of the big radio manufacturers have pretty much all gotten in line and decided on a common color code. So, this, with the Pioneer radio, color for color. Just go ahead and match color for color, and you'll be fine. If you have an Alpine radio, refer to the installation guide on your radio, because Alpine is the... Only one besides, you know, little cheapies or, or uh, Android radios or whatever that have a slightly different wiring harness that like three wires are different and you don't want to hook them up wrong. <clears throat> so, I got the color for color all matched up. And as far as the extra wires, because this is uh, a reversing, uh, it's got a reverse camera. You got... The purple and white, which would be tapped into your reverse uh, wire, either go all the way back to the bulb and tap into the, the brown and uh, green wire, or I actually split open the harness at the kick panel, and I found the reverse signal wire there. That's where I tapped into it. That's going to be in another video. I'm going to show you all that. Here's the pack bypass module. The green wire goes to the green wire on the Pioneer, which is for the brake, uh, the e-brake. Black goes to black for the ground, and then the blue goes to the blue with the white stripe for the amp turn-on to power up the module. 
on the Cherokee, you're going to leave your black wire, which is the ground wire for the radio, you're going to leave that open because the black wire is not in your wiring harness. You have a separate wire that you ground this on or you can just ground it to the dash. So uh, yeah, this also has a speed input, this radio. That's not going to be used uh, with this application, so don't worry about it. So I'm going to go ahead and tidy all of this up, tape it up, leave my little pigtails that I have hanging out that I may or may not use. Go ahead and tap all those together, and uh, I'll go back to the vehicle and show you how to do that. Alright, what's included with the dash kit? Is your dash panel. You're going to have to swap your uh, vents over. You will also have to swap all of your clips over. There should be six clips. <clears throat> Get the instruction manual. Here's the uh, aluminum tape. There's four tape. I have this four, ta uh, four tape strips that should be plenty. And you get a lone screw. And the brackets. So that's it for the dash kit. Alright. Now we're in the vehicle. And uh, removing this dash piece is very easy. First, close. First, turn the ignition on. Put it down low. Pull anything else you have on the dash off. Come down here on the side. Pull out. Come down here on this side. Pull out. And you can just kind of pull up in the front and it pops off. <clears throat> Get it out. I got a alarm wire on it, so I'm just going to set that over to the side. I'm going to have to cut that later. Now, you can just put it back in park. Turn the ignition off. And there's the radio. Now, I think the factory radios are about the same. There's a bolt hole here and a bolt hole here. Um, uh, this one's actually broken, but uh, uh, aftermarket head unit is going to have a bolt there. A uh, screw there and screw there. I'm going to go ahead and take those out, pull that out, and I'll be back. Just take the screws out. I said this bottom is broken, but I still got to take it out. Pull it out. Connect your antenna. Got RCAs. Disconnect my steering wheel. Or not steering wheel. Disconnect my mic. Connect the power. Set the radio to the side. Disconnect my amp turn on. Plug the harness. There's a little pull tab right here. Just pull up on it, pull it out. Don't know if you can see it, but here's the ground wire I was talking about. It's loose from the harness. old wire and that's it I'll get you closer and show you what you need to cut all right as far as what you have to cut off from what I saw this whole piece right here cut along this panel right here all the way back and then again cut a straight line I think along there's a crease right here so cut I think along that crease, all the way back here to the back, where it angles, and you're going to have to cut that whole, this whole section off. You're going to turn into like a little L-shaped land. Over here, do the same thing. Follow this line down here. Cut straight all the way back. Cut up. Cut here where this is. Cut all the way back. And that's it. So, uh... Use your method of choice, whether it be Dremel, uh, plunge saw, or plunge tool. I wish I had a plunge tool. 
um, or a little recip saw, uh, like a little mini recip saw. That's what I'm going to try to use. So uh, I'm going to get to cutting. It might be a minute, so I'll be back when I get done. I don't know how much you, you this you're going to see, but uh, I'll just kind of do a time lapse of me cutting this. And these are all the pieces I cut off. Two back pieces, a little front nub piece for the driver's side. Driver's side long piece, passenger side long piece. Here's a closer look at what I cut. It's driver's side, and it's passenger side. I left a little lip right there because it looks like they didn't cut all the way over in the instructions on that side, so I left that there. On this one they cut it flush, so I cut it flush. Now, um, I'm just going to clean up around the edges, try to get some of the plastic that's melted, just kind of pick that off. And uh, I'm not going to put the tape on yet, I'm going to go ahead and get the radio, get it mounted, uh, and see if i got room. If i got room, then I'll start tidy tidying everything up, and uh, covering up those holes, and I will show you all that. But, uh, yeah, I'll be back in a second. All right, it's been a few minutes, but I finally got the radio in. Uh, the bottom mounts are going to go on the AC on both sides. This top one goes on the factory radio mount. But here on the passenger side, our driver's side, you actually drill a 1 8 hole and use that single screw that's provided with the, with the uh, dash kit. And that's actually how that goes in. Now, in order to get the radio to fit, in order to get the radio to fit, there are two more things I had to cut off. Right there, and right there. On the driver and passenger side, there's two tabs that go down a little bit and back towards the inside of the dash. On both sides, I had to go along and cut those flush in order to get the radio to fit. It would not fit otherwise. So I actually have, on the passenger side, it didn't create a hole in the dash. But on the driver's side, there's this little hole in the heater box that I'm also going to have to fill. But now the radio slides in no problem. So I'm actually going to go ahead and tape up these slots. And if I have a little bit, I'll go tape up there. If not, I'll have to go just run to the store during the week and pick up some uh, uh, aluminum tape but uh, yeah I'll be back after I tape that on there
got the radio in. I got the, uh, <clears throat> I got it uh, just sitting here. Got the tape in, which you saw some of that. Make sure before you tape it up, you actually bolt the radio in in the stock location and the two upper HVAC ports. Because I had to peel some of my tape back up on this side and make it uh, lower the piece down that goes straight back. I had to lower that down. It was too high. Now that this is bolted in and held up here, the kit comes with that extra screw. You drill an eighth inch hole right there and you put that screw in it. So I'm going to go ahead and drill that eighth inch hole. All right, as far as the dash kit for the Pioneer radio anyway, this is how I had it ho hooked up on both sides. And there we go. It's on. It's tight. <clears throat> now I can start hooking stuff up. <clears throat> it's my remote wire. My ground wire is around here somewhere. There's my ground wire. Right there. Here's my microphone. Here's my aux cables. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you where to tap into the reverse wire if you don't want to go all the way back to the tail light. All right, to tap into the reverse wire, come down here to the kick panel, pull your kick panel off, pull this back, lift it up a little bit, and the wiring harness that goes into this big uh, protector right here for the sill panel comes out right here, and then I just strip back some of the wire, dig through here, dig through this big bundle of wire, and you'll come up on this wire, brown wire with a green stripe, brown wire with a green stripe, and this bundle of wire is your reverse wire. It goes from right here all the way back to the tail lights. So if you want to tap into the reverse wire at the tail light, go ahead and do that. If not, I just tapped into this harness, cut the excess off the brake uh, input of the radio harness, and I'm just going to wire this up through the dash and tap into the uh, wire behind the dash. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that. Now I'm just going to hook up my ground wire, which I don't need that long, so... I already hooked them up, black to black, gray to gray. Already hooked the connectors up, black to black, gray to gray. Now I'm just going to connect my ground wire and my amp turn-on wire, and also my <coughs> reverse light wire which I have routed up along with my RCAs <clears throat> routed up along the same route I took my RCAs Let's give it that Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and put tape over this ignition power wire. <clears throat> I'm leaving this open because I may use this to power my camera. I would, <clears throat> the reason I would use a switched power, uh, ignition power, for my camera is so I can turn on my camera while I'm driving and I don't have to be in reverse. Uh, there's a lot of people that told me how wrong I was <clears throat> in my camera video on my Yukon when I specifically stressed out that I'm connecting it to auxiliary power because I wanted to be able to use it while moving and there was a bunch of people telling me how 
either stupid I was or wrong I was because that was supposed to go to the, to the uh, reverse wire. Well, if you do that, it only comes on to the reverse. And that is not what I wanted, so. <clears throat> This is the reverse wire again, the purple and white wire. And there we go. That's pretty much everything back here hooked up <clears throat> to the wire harness. So, <clears throat> remote wire is hooked up, reverse wire trigger is hooked up. I hope I was in frame for most of that. And the ground wire hooked up. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat shrink those. And I can actually mount the radio for good for now. And uh, then I'll show you what to do with the uh, bezel. All right, on your old bezel, you're going to need all six of these clips. And then you're going to have to push the vents out. Now the vents are just clipped in. Let's go for the back side, push out. These, you can get a flat blade screwdriver underneath these uh, little feet and pry them up and then just transfer them over. I'm going to go ahead and do that. <clears throat> and then we'll go back to the truck and actually put the radio in. Alright, got all the clips transferred over. Also got the vents transferred. Now on these vents, I would do it one at a time. They actually only go in one way, so they got to be both on the right side and flipped over the correct way or they won't snap in so yeah anyway now I can uh, bring this to the truck and uh, start hooking everything up alright got my big tangle of uh, stuff on there that hopefully fits behind the dash so I've got my subwoofers I gotta hook up and that is going to be, that's front, that's rear, that's the audio input, there's a subwoofer right there. Kind of wish these were on the back of the radio on this one, because there is not a lot of room behind this dash. Got the mic. All right, take two, mic, <clears throat> because, funnily enough, the mics were different between the two radios. Right now, I do not have either my backup camera or my forward-facing camera, so those will not be connected right now. So, connect the main power. Now stuff it all behind the dash, which ought to be fun. Before I put it behind the dash, I gotta connect my USBs. And because I'm using Android Auto, I'm gonna be doing USB 2, which is this one. And I am using this 90 degree bracket. Um, I don't know if I need to, but I am anyway. Then taking the extension that comes with the radio. Hooking that in there. Now, I'm going to get this wrapped around on this side because that's where I'm going to run it down. Now let's stuff it all back behind. Though y'all won't know that I took it back out because I'll cut that up. I don't know if that USB makes it thicker or if it's just hanging up on something it didn't the first time. First time it went in pretty good. Since I put that USB in there, it's a little bit meh. 
still all fits, but this is with this with this double den kit. I would probably recommend getting a digital double den receiver that does not have a CD player. I would have went with that option, but I wanted the more upper class radio, I guess you would say, from Pioneer. And the only ones that I saw that were straight media were the lower grade Nex radios. And I wanted the upper Nex radio. So, sacrificing case length, or putting Jeopardy case length, to get the higher class radio. It fits, but it's tight. I would definitely recommend getting a digital only double den radio. That's there. That's just, this USB is just gonna pop <clears throat> on the bottom, on the passenger side. I'll run the USB cable down and it'll just pop out uh, beside the glove box. Now I am gonna have to modify this because I got this wire right here. So I will have to fit it and then dribble it and then I'll be back when I actually put it on. Alrighty. I got the uh, top modified for my little switch panel up at the top. <clears throat> Take it, put the gear lever all the way down. Put it on, put it down. Make sure they're all lined up. Should be able to start pressing down now. That one sides in, that sides in. That sides in. The bottom's already in, I'm pretty sure. It's a little tight. <clears throat> USB cable coming out the bottom. And that's it. But yeah, there it is. And uh, double den is installed, a dash panel is installed. I'm going to move out of the way and turn on my uh, D, uh, blower motor all the way. You will get crap flying out. I don't know if you can hear that. You can hear all the little plastic chunks. But yeah, when you turn turn it on, make sure your uh, your eyeballs are not in the way of the vents, so you get plastic in your eyes. Um, you're cutting through the the heater box, so you're going to have trouble. It blew fine. I have no issue with with flow, so uh, that's what that aluminum tape is for. But uh, yeah, it's good. It's it's nice. It fits pretty decent. Uh, the radio seems to be sitting on this bottom piece down at the bottom and I think that's a little bit on these these side panel brackets are not I would have liked the radio to sit slightly higher but the, with those brackets it really couldn't sit any higher um, and I have the radio pushed all the way back too I cannot push the radio any farther forward um, I don't know if you can see but yeah See the radio rip bezel right there. You can see the bottom of the dash right there. It's tight. Uh, it fits. And there's no problem with that. It ejects fine. Moves fine. Moves fine. Uh, tilts fine. Um, yeah. So, um, I'm not going to go over the radio. Um, but there's... An, another channel, uh, Five Car Stereo, um, or Five Car Audio, one of the two. They did a complete overview of this radio if you want to look at it. That's why I didn't do an unboxing. They also did, or at least a, what was in the box, they did that too. This was mainly just installing the dash, 
and installing a radio. Um, but I'm not going to go over the radio. Um, yeah, everything's good. Everything's tight. Everything's popped in. And uh, I have no complaints so far. So I will be installing a uh, camera, but that will be another day for another video. And uh, <clears throat> I will show installing the camera and wiring that up. But uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later.